So I was on a mountain in Switzerland. That, just hearing it out loud, I could tell how pretentious that sounded. It's my first time saying it out loud. That, that's, I, I promise I'm, it gets better. Just stick with me. The sun is going down. It's two more hours to the summit. And my friend Nick proposes that we flip a coin to see if we keep climbing or not. Now, this isn't a situation that I would have pictured myself in even a year ago. So naturally I said, heads or tails. So it's not Everest. We lost the trail a while ago. It's not actually even considered a difficult hike. So now we're kind of just hanging out. Leave that for a second. And that's kind of the point. And this is a trail, finally. Climbed all, all that sh All that sh which was a dumb idea, but. <laughs> this is in no way about how badass I am. It's not about five ways you too could be cooler at dinner parties. It's not about impressing other people, but rather about fulfilling yourself. Mostly it's about my own journey and at times my struggles to embrace the pursuit of an interesting life. Now I did not always have a mindset to seek out and embrace new experiences. It wasn't something I was predisposed with. Honestly, for a long time I was for lack of a better phrase, letting life happen to me. My tendencies are to lie low and sit still and not do anything that makes me too uncomfortable. The concept of creating life experiences on my terms was something that took me a long time to comprehend, but I was lucky to get enough nuggets of wisdom and inspiration along the way that eventually shaped this picture in my head where there was once just an empty space. And it's a picture of what my life could be. And that's why I want to talk about it. Not because I have like groundbreaking insight that you can't find anywhere else, but because people like me need a push. When I was a kid, my parents loved to tell the story about how they met in Paris on a study abroad trip. How they'd been in the same university for years and had never crossed paths. How they maybe wouldn't have even liked each other had they met at their school and how they'd actually wanted to start their lives together there in Paris, but it never came together. When you're a kid, there are stories that your parents just tell you and they don't really mean a lot at the time. But as I got older, this story started to gain more and more traction with me and it started to mean a lot more to me. In it, there's almost this warning of what can happen if you don't seek out experiences for yourself. If my mom and dad didn't both decide to take that trip separately, then I might not be here. They might have never met. And on the other end of it, if they ended up living in Paris, I'd be French. I guess, would I be French? The point is I had this idea in my head that there was just a path laid out for me. All I had to do was just keep on living and life would just happen. And as I was getting older and this story was rattling around in my head, I was slowly realizing that that's not the case. So fast forward to college and my girlfriend, Amber, she's my wife now, she was talking to me about us going to Chicago for the summer, doing internships, and trying to live there and see what it was like. And I remember the conversation so vividly because I remember telling her essentially, yeah, but isn't that gonna be hard? <laughs> we don't have money or a place or anything. What, how are we gonna do that? And I just remember her response so clearly because she said, yeah, it's gonna be hard, but I'm gonna do it. So you can either come with or not. Fair enough, I guess. We're doing this. It's also a little bit like foreshadowing for what marriage is like, in case you're wondering, but that's a totally different story. The funny thing is I had spent my whole life dreaming of living in a big city, leaving my hometown and going somewhere big and exciting. And now that we were talking about doing it, I was gonna avoid it just because it's hard. 
You guys can probably see how backwards that is, but it took me a second to get there. So for honestly the first time in my life, I made a decision to do something that I knew was gonna be hard, I knew would be uncomfortable at times, but I knew I wanted the experience, so I went and did it anyway. We lived in a studio apartment we could barely even afford. We worked hourly minimum wage jobs for four days out of the week and then did unpaid internships the other three days. Also, don't take an unpaid internship. That's, don't let that be what you like take away from this video. Do, don't do that. But every free second that we had, we used to explore the city and see and do and taste things we had never seen or done or tasted. And this for me really was the experience that flipped my perspective. It gave me the will to override the internal monologue I have to just like take it easy and take the easiest way out always because I was experiencing firsthand the rewards of pushing past that limit that I just kind of inherently set for myself. At this point, you're probably like, okay, so what? What's, what's the thing? How do you get yourself to push past and get to the experiences that you think will lead to an interesting life? To which I would say, first things first, define interesting. For me, people are really interesting. And so are places. Like I said, I'm someone predisposed to avoiding discomfort or conflict, so I need people and places that counteract that. I surround myself with people that challenge me and lift me up and make me laugh. People that broaden my perception of what life is. And yeah, if they love me, that's a good bonus too. And I choose to live in and explore places that encourage me not to sit still. I need places that inspire me and energize me and just tempt me to actually go out and do something and not let life pass me by. And when you add those things together, that's when things get interesting. Best friend plus van plus Switzerland equals a life-changing journey. Soulmate plus new country equals everyday adventure. For me, it's that combination of people and places that creates interesting experiences in my life. And really, at the end of the day, what are our lives if not a summation of our experiences? And to reach those things, it's all about making choices that can lead you to them. Look at the choices in front of you, the career path, the place that you live, the company you keep, the way you make your coffee in the morning. If you're someone like me, overcome your urge to opt for the easiest thing. Not always, but at least sometimes. And instead of the easiest, pick the thing that's the most interesting. And that starts by defining interesting for you. It might not be what I would pick. I mean, Lord knows you can find people who are doing bigger and crazier and more interesting things with just a few clicks right here. But my version of an interesting life doesn't have to be that, and neither does yours. It doesn't have to be something formulated to impress people. It doesn't have to gain you clout or admiration or followers or any of that stuff. It just has to gain you more moments that when you look back, you can say, damn, I'm glad I did that. It's a long and windy off-trail road to get here, but when Maddox says we're gonna go to the top of a mountain, it means you're gonna fucking go to the top of a mountain. If you like this video, subscribe, stick around. I do a lot of different things on the channel about travel or things that I'm just curious about. And lately one of the things I've been doing is vlogging my everyday life in Germany. And obviously I had this constant battle of wondering if my life is interesting enough to vlog. And I think that that's what led me to thinking about it and making this video. And is it interesting enough to vlog? My conclusion, eh. But some people seem to like watching it and personally I like doing it and that's the most important part. So if you want to see more, subscribe, stick around. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers.